This video segment is going to start out with John Jameson showing us uh, some work on the English wheel, which is a tool designed to help form and curve aluminum sheets so they fit better on the aircraft. As we start the video today, uh, John is demonstrating this and then we will now move on to some work that he's doing to actually replace a sheet on the uh, nose of the Lancaster. Okay, uh, this is the English wheel I was speaking of earlier. Basically what you've got is a big heavy beam and we've got one wheel that is flat and another one that is curved. So what we do is we put the metal, metal between the two rollers and as I roll it, it's going to give it a start making a curvature this way. So we'll go, we we'll go back and forth and we we'll start to make an arch that way. Now, as you can see on the last one, we had curvatures in two directions. So at which time, then you're going to go and turn it 90 degrees and run it through again. And it's going to make the curve go that way. The biggest thing is, is you start with light pressures and it's just a matter of back and forth and back and forth. And as, as it, the metal is getting a little thinner, we have an adjustment wheel on the bottom that we adjust to make it a little, add a little more tension. So it's basically compressing the aluminum when it's making the ship. Now, this lower ball is quite mild radius and it's used for most purposes. When we get into the very curvature areas, we have another roller that we would put in to replace that. The top one always stays the same because that's what holds gives us something to work against um, and that's basically all it takes for a crown to be a crown English wheel. As you can see here John has cut a uh, piece of aluminum to approximately the size he's going to need and has marked a, a center point on it so that he can line it up and make sure it's in the right place. He's now removing the plastic covering that protects the aluminum and starting work on the English wheel to form this piece into the shape that he needs. This is by no means a speedy process. It takes a lot of back and forth to roll the aluminum to make it curve. But as you can see, it's already starting to change shape as he works through the wheel and getting a curve bent into the aluminum. Here John is removing the old section of uh, aluminum so that we can uh, he can cut it to make a better uh, pattern and fit to the piece that he needs. A little more preliminary bending and working on the sheet to try and approximate the curves that are needed to uh, fit onto the aircraft. And now roughly cutting out the shape and size that's needed for the finished piece. As you can see, it is starting to take the shape of the uh, original piece so that it will fit on the aircraft properly. Well, now that we've started to roll the skins with the English wheel, and now we're going to try and fit it to the skin. And we do that. We've got, we've put a couple of rivets holes in here for referencing to get the alignment. So what we will start with is we'll get a Clico in and start seeing where we have to adjust it. The biggest trick is just getting it started. 
So we'll just work out a little bit, get it drawn into position. And I base everything off. That's looking pretty right. There, we got our first one in. Now we'll get the second one in and just see where we are. There it is. And then we draw our edges in. Ah, there we are. And as you can see, we're starting to get the contours coming in. Right now I'm trying to focus on this upper area because this is where the tightest radius is and I've just got to draw it around just a little bit more. So I'm going to carry on rolling this area and sort of make it come that way. And down here on the bottom, I've got a similar situation since our center is good and true and square. And this is all good, so I've got to work this area, this area, and this area. And uh, we just have to do one little bit at a time. And, and I just got to move that out that way. So now that we've done that, we'll take it off and back to the roller and uh, keep shaping it. And it's just a, matter, a process of just working it a little bit at a time, working out from the center to make it all want to flow out. And uh, this is how we're doing these, replacing these skins. Okay, we made this fixture to pull the sleeves out of the Merlin engine. The sleeves are very badly corroded about the pistons, so they're of no value. And uh, we need to take them out and replace them with new sleeves. So I got the 5-8 uh, steel plates cut uh, by a plasma torch and then machined them up in my, with my lathe and milling machine in my shop at home. I uh, machined these out of one inch uh, shafting. They're a press fit in the plates so, and they're held in with 3 8 bolts on each end to give the whole assembly some stability. Uh, this plate is machined so that it just fits inside the sleeve and the OD of this plate is about tenth of less than the outside diameter of the sleeves so when we pull it out we won't touch the aluminum with this. We machined uh, uh, threads on the one inch shaft and uh, flaps on here so we can hold it from there. That's not my toolbox. Uh, no, we're going to try it for the first time to see if it fits and, and uh, we won't be pulling the sleeve out. We'll just check the fit up because uh, we want to be able to test it first with the old block that we have. So make sure we don't damage this one. Okay, so this is the first fit up test. That part's so good. I've got two hardened washers, so we won't be galling and producing a bunch of friction. Those longer arms. Yes. In the manual they call for heating the block up to just under boiling temperature of water so that the aluminum will expand about three times as much as the steel and that will aid in pulling it out. So we've done this just to check the fit up and make sure everything should work. We're not going to pull the sleeve out because we might damage the aluminum block. We're going to practice on an old engine we've got first and if we damage it, it there's no harm done but we want to make darn sure we don't damage anything from our good engine blocks. So we modified a hot water tank by cutting the side out of it and putting a grill in the bottom and the reason for that is so we can uh, raise the temperature of the aluminum block to just under boiling 
aluminum expands at three times the rate of steel, so that should loosen the increase in clearance on the steel sleeves, and uh, then we will try to pull them out and, and hope they're loose enough. <laughs> Well, this is the old bulkhead, which had a lot of corrosion around certain areas. And we have the option of either repairing it or making a new one. Repairing it didn't seem practical, so finally we made a new one, and I'll show you where the new one is. Well, here is our new bulkhead. As you can see, it's a lot better than the old one and um, it's the way it should look. And in fact, on, on this side, if I'll turn around, you can see it even has the, um, the fittings which allow the, the pipes to go through the bulkhead. So it will look a lot better when it's finally in its correct position, which would be somewhere around, around this. <laughs> So I've been working on uh, disassembling the firewall and the, the engine mount uh, on the left side uh, because at some point we need to get things apart so that the firewall can be cleaned up and, uh, and then we can have it looking uh, better. There's some significant corrosion on the left-hand firewall as well as there's a couple holes that need to be patched. So this shows you what it looks like beforehand with some of the components on it. And so on the left-hand side, we've stripped it all apart. Okay. So this is the center piece of the firewall. So the firewall is, is designed to be in three, three pieces, the middle and the top and the bottom that uh, go around the engine mount. Uh, you know, firewall is designed to offer obviously fire protection in the event that there's a, um, some sort of a leak that causes a, a fire in the engine compartment that it doesn't spread to the rest of the airplane. So as you can see that there's significant corrosion with this one. Not as bad on the backside, which uh, didn't see as much weather. So I'll show you some of the other pieces. Bottom piece, so they all fit together and the top piece. So we plan to have these sent out to be uh, bead blasted and then we can see what sort of condition they are in and where things need to be patched and whether it actually needs to be replaced. But at this point, the plan is to keep the original material and just restore it uh, so that it uh, is functional, but probably not airworthy at this point. So there's a, uh, these Zeus fastener springs, these Zeus fastener springs will all need to be replaced. And these are what helps, uh, you know, attach the cowling onto the, to the engine. So. so it's the same idea with the engine mount. The engine mount's overall in good condition, but again, there's some fairly significant corrosion that needs to be cleaned off so that we can see the general condition of the metal underneath. Uh, but at this point, I don't believe that there's any plan to, to uh, replace any of these because, you know, until we decide whether the airplane is going to be uh, made to, you know, to be restored to airworthy condition or just to the point where we can uh, put some engines on it and run it up but not fly it. So th these pieces will need to be e remade or... Um, at some point, because I don't believe that, you know, that's that top bracket where the engine mount slides in because it's broken is not going to uh, be good enough to, to put an engine on it. So the next part of the restoration that I'm working on for this side of the plane is the landing gear. Uh, the landing gear overall is in pretty good shape, uh, but we want to disassemble the locking mechanism and the pivot 
so that we make sure that it works the way it's supposed to and that it, the gear will stay locked uh, when we put the, the gear under the airplane and the airplane is uh, assembled in the future. So there is some corrosion on uh, parts of the landing gear. So there is a bit of corrosion on this part of the landing gear. So uh, the plan is to, to basically disassemble everything and then uh, similar to the firewall, uh, we'll get it sent out and cleaned up and repainted uh, so that you know everything looks great when we're done. As you can see here, we have much of the canopy frame wired into place. This was a, a really a two-fold reason for doing that. First was to ensure alignment through the tubular section through into the wooden aft portion of the canopy. We needed to make sure we had the proper height to get that line straight. The second reason became more or less a, a fitting problem, making sure things fit, how they came together, and what we call non-deferred gratification. Uh, right now, everything is just wired into place. Uh, bolting and finalization will obviously come later. Having formed the basic shapes of the wood frames, we then want to establish exact location of the mount points. The flashing strips attached to the fuselage will join to the lower edges of the acrylic to be installed later, so they now play an important part in locating the wood frame mountings. The frames must allow for the correct clearance between the wood and the flashing. As originally installed on FM-104, there is a small misalignment in the canopy from one side to the other. We will accommodate this by making small adjustments on each side in the lower ends of the wood frame shape and mount holes. This allows keeping the flashing strips mounted in their original positions on the fuselage. At the forward end of the wood frame section, the flashing ends and the acrylic attaches to the steel forward section. The drawings show the steel and wood frames parallel in this area, so we will adjust and verify this as well. <laughs> 